In this video, I'm going to be talking about the value of travel and also sharing a few of my own travel experiences. But before we get started, make sure you check out the links in the description to see my courses, which I think you might enjoy. And also, if you haven't already, subscribe, subscribe, and hit the like button. Why not? This is my passport. You can see that it's very old and worn. It's hard to tell the difference between the front and the back. You can see that pages have been added here because I ran out of space for stamps and visas. And today's kind of a meaningful day because today's the day that this passport expires. Now, of course, I can get a new passport, of course. But I want to talk a little bit about why this passport has been so important to me and why it is so meaningful. This video is about the value of travel and why I think everybody should travel, everyone should travel, because it's really one of the most important things that you can do in your life. And that's definitely been true for me. But let me just go back to, to the passport thing and kind of talk about some of my experiences and through my experiences share some of my my insights, my thoughts about travel, and hopefully that will, if you don't travel much, convince you to travel more, because I think it really is one of the most important things you can do. 10 years ago, I was in school, I was in university, and I was kind of tired of where I was, I was kind of tired of the environment of my university campus, so I thought I would transfer for a year and then come back. I, I applied at a school called King's College London, and I got accepted. And then I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna go to another country. I need to get a passport. So I applied, I got my passport. Then I decided not to go. I changed my mind. But I had a passport, right? So then several years later, I can't remember exactly when, I was in a situation where I suddenly realized I wanna go to India to study yoga because I had a friend who was teaching me yoga at the time. And I thought, wow, it'd be cool to actually learn this in India where yoga started, right? And because I had a passport with me, I could go right away without really doing that much, without going through that process. I think if I hadn't had a passport at the time, I wouldn't have gone. I never would have started traveling. So that was really the beginning for me. And India was a mind-blowing experience. I'd never really experienced anything that different from what I was used to. India and the United States are so so different. And then from there, I just kept traveling because I kind of got addicted. I would come back and forth between the US and different countries, mostly in Asia, going back and forth and traveling as much as possible. And it hasn't stopped since then. I still regularly travel. And through all of my travel experiences, there have been a couple things that have become really clear to me. These are the things that, that I really want to share with you, the reasons that you should travel. Now, if we're talking about staying at a really nice hotel or going to a place, maybe a resort, and hanging out by the beach and just reading a book and then going back to the hotel and then going back to the beach and back to the hotel, that's not what I'm talking about when I say travel. So that kind of travel, that's one thing, but I would call that more vacation, right? Relaxation. That's not what I think of when I think of travel. Travel to me is really exploring a new place, getting outside of your comfort zone and experiencing something very different from what you've been doing for the last several months because you've been in a routine at home, right? Something really different every day, maybe struggling, but meeting local people and doing cool stuff that you've never done before. And you're seeing things from a completely new perspective. Now that sounds very general and flowery, but that is one of the most important parts of travel. We, we all know that we live in a little corner of the world and that the world is much bigger and there's much more going on. Everybody knows that. But knowing something and experiencing it those are two very different things, right? Yeah, of course I know, the world is a very big place. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I've seen movies, yeah, okay, I know. But going there, seeing those other corners, right? Meeting the people, trying the food, seeing the views, struggling to climb up a mountain, 
it's a much deeper experience and gives you a completely new perspective on your own little corner and the one that you've just visited, right? So that perspective, I think, is really a powerful thing. And it's kind of hard to explain it because you have to experience it for yourself. Having all those experiences and being able to look back on those, I think, I think that has really shaped me as a person, shaped my perspectives and how I think about the world. I certainly have changed a lot since I started traveling. So what experiences make up that new perspective? I think there are two kind of experiences that are, that are maybe most important. Number one is meeting local people, connecting with local people wherever you travel. When you travel somewhere and you see how other people live and you talk with people from a place that's totally different from where you come from, and you see that they maybe have a different way of thinking than you. They believe something different. They eat different food. They appreciate different kinds of art. Whatever. There's a different way of thinking and a different way of being. And that way of being and doing things is to them totally normal. To me, when I go to a new place and I see that new lifestyle and I talk with them and eat with them, I, I see it as exotic, right? Wow, this is so different. This is so new, ah, it's so new. But to them, it's like boring, everyday, nothing new, same old thing. So that's a powerful experience when you realize, oh, wait a second, this is just normal for them. To me, it's crazy, totally different, totally fresh. To them, it's what they do every day. Then you realize, oh, wait a second, if they come to where I'm from and they visit me, they would say the same thing. They would say, oh, wow, this is so fresh and new and crazy and different. But to me, it's ordinary, normal, boring. So everybody's ordinary life is crazy and exotic and different to someone else somewhere else in the world. So maybe it can help you see your own life in a new way, but also help you realize that your life and how you live and what you think is normal, that that's not the only way to live. The more I've traveled, the more I've realized there isn't one right lifestyle. There isn't one right way to be or right way to eat or right way to think or right way to believe. That there's this whole range of different ways and each one has something interesting and valuable about it. And when you explore those different ways to be a person and you explore those different kinds of lifestyles you might find things that are actually a little better than what you're used to i'll give you an example okay in china the way that people eat is very interesting in china when you eat the food is generally in the middle and you can kind of pick and choose what you want right now okay so there are a bunch of dishes here if i don't like that i don't have to eat that I can choose that and that and that, right? And it's all in the middle. And I may help my friends get food. I may give them something, right? But that's a very social way of eating, very communal. Where I come from in the United States, eating is much different. We have our own food, our own plate. Mine, 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 this is mine. You go to a restaurant, you order something, you make a mistake, it's not what you like, sorry. Order another thing and pay for two meals or try again next time right so it's a totally different way to think about eating so that experience that travel experience gave me this idea that oh actually I like that better if I only have my own culture as a reference then I have to just say well everything in my culture is right uh, it's correct it's perfect this way of eating is best but if I have other cultures like the example I mentioned and I can learn more about how other people live, I can begin to pick out these things and say, oh, I like that. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start doing that. That's really cool. It doesn't mean you have to pick things out, but at least you know what else is out there. You know what other possibilities there are. You know a new way of thinking about something related to culture or whatever, right? And that has been one of the most powerful things for me to be able to sort of 
put together these different things that I find as I travel and incorporate them into myself to make my own lifestyle a little different because of my travel experiences. It's a way of sort of taking travel experiences and keeping them with me somehow by making them part of my, my everyday life, even when I'm back home. There's the man who lives far away from the city in the jungles of Thailand, and his job every day is to find the elephant. If people want to play with the elephant in the river, his job is to go and find the elephant because the elephant is walking around free. And that to him is normal. There are the people who take care of monkeys and baboons in South Africa. Not everybody does that kind of thing, but some people do that every day. That's their life. There are kids who grow up in the slums of India who live in unimaginably poor conditions, who are happy, amazingly. That really blew my mind when I experienced that. Playing cricket, hanging out, having fun. Not to say they don't struggle, but it became clear to me at that point, wow, you don't need money to be happy. There's the old man in Chengdu in the park who practices calligraphy with a water brush. So he writes beautiful calligraphy and then the water evaporates and it disappears and then he starts over again. But even while you have those different spectrums of culture, people living extremely different lifestyles and having different norms, there is a lot that people share. Some things that are kind of universal. Everybody has fears and worries. Most people believe in something and have a serious faith. People care about their families. People want to enjoy each other's company and enjoy a meal together. So what I've found is this sort of interesting blend between feeling like I live in a world that's so interesting, so colorful and so crazy that I could never completely get my head around it, while at the same time feeling connected to everybody. That I'm a human, you're a human, we're all humans. And because we're all humans, it's important that we understand each other and we try to see each other's point of view and that we try to appreciate each other's culture. And the more we do that, the more we empathize with each other, the more we get, the more value comes to each of us. So that I think is probably the most important lesson of travel. But again, hearing me say it, that's one thing. I say, go out and do it. Travel somewhere, experience a new place. The other value of travel is the variety in nature, in landscapes, in environments. Each place that you go feels different. Maybe a dry place in the mountains, grasslands, warm places, hot places, tropical places, Arctic places, places with four clear and distinct seasons. Each place has its own unique feeling. And experiencing these is sort of like experiencing different flavors of food. Having those experiences and those memories is, it's interesting to explore different kinds of environments and to see the variety of nature. It makes you feel like you're really connected to the earth. All of this is just me trying to express and get across my feelings about the value of travel. But I would say it's, it's not enough, I can never really get it across because each person's experiences are their own. So I would really encourage you to take a trip. It doesn't have to be to another country. So go somewhere, travel somewhere, even if it's not to another country, that's fine. Go to another city, go to the countryside, meet new people, meet other travelers, try to soak in the culture, ask questions, right? Try to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. I guarantee that you'll come back from that trip with memories and new experiences that you wouldn't sell for any amount of money in the world. I certainly wouldn't. All right, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.